He tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, be not conformed to this world. Why? Because Satan is the little god of this world. He said, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He said, get your mind right. Somebody said, get your mind right. So you have to change your mind from the world mind, from the old mind, to have a kingdom mind. To know that God is not limited. There's no deficit in heaven. We limit ourselves. We cause ourselves to have a deficit by the way that we think. The kingdom is a reality today. It is not something that we're waiting on to get to. We don't have to wait anymore. I don't know. Maybe your preacher didn't tell you like mine did that we get saved and now we just wait to go to heaven. But see, we are praying that kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom is on earth. It's not in heaven. It's on earth. It's on the inside of us. So we don't have to get saved and then wait in the by and by to get the blessings of the kingdom. I've said it over and over again. I won't need a mansion when I get to heaven. I already got one. I need one on earth. I won't need any money when I get to heaven. I'll be walking on streets of gold. I need some money right here. I won't need health when I get to heaven. I'll be whole when I get there. I need health right here. I won't need no car. When I get to heaven, I'll have some wings. I need those things right here. So Jesus came and said that the kingdom of heaven is near. It is here. So all we have to do now is figure out how to appropriate and get the blessings of God. How do I walk in this stuff? How do I have what God said I could have? I'm glad you asked the question. See, the kingdom may be applied to every circumstance we encounter in life. Not just sickness, not just poverty, but every circumstance. We can apply the kingdom to it. The kingdom has everything we need. It has righteousness, joy, good health. It has money. That thing we don't like to talk about. But the kingdom has money. Glory to God. There, I told you there's no deficit in the kingdom. Whatever God's kingdom rules on earth, it is visibly demonstrated. You will know that the kingdom is in charge when it's demonstrated. You will know that a person is releasing their kingdom and walking in it when things are demonstrated around them. God does not want us to stay in the same place year after year over and over again. Kingdom citizenship. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God, which is on earth. And kingdom citizenship is about ruling a domain. It is about recognizing our place and our rights through Christ as citizens of God's kingdom and claiming those rights so we can live victoriously and fulfill our purpose in this world. The kingdom is a reality to us today. You have to make it real. That's why we're teaching about it. You have to make this real. Bring it into your reality. Bring it into your life. And begin to live in the kingdom and not just in the world. Jesus said that his kingdom was not of this world. We're not of this world. We're aliens just passing through. So our life is not of this world. So we don't have to accept what the world has to offer. The kingdom has everything we need. Wherever God's kingdom rule is on earth, you're going to see it. You will see it in your life. It will just pop up around you. And you'll know that it's the kingdom taking place. God's kingdom is his will. Exercise on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus wanted heaven, earth to look just like heaven. He wanted you to have right here on earth what you have when you get to heaven. But does earth look like heaven? It's because we have not released the kingdom of God. You can experience heaven on earth in a tangible way. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to wait till I get to heaven to have everything. Anybody else with me? 
Can I get a few witnesses, a few people with me? I want it right here. Somebody say right here. Right now. Because it's a right now gospel. Hallelujah. We can claim and assert our authority as sons and daughters of the king in this universe. I don't know about you, but I am a daughter of the king. I said I am a daughter of the king. I didn't say the word of God said it. And he said he's not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, it is what he said. I said I am a daughter of the king. Now if I am a daughter of the king and I live in his kingdom, I should have kingdom things. See, you got to realize who you are. I should have kingdom things. So you got to change the way you think about your own self before you can receive the things of the kingdom. See, too many of us walk around, well, I don't know who mama is. I don't know who daddy is. Well, you just don't know what I went through. And you don't know how many children my mama got. You don't know I got food stamps. And you don't know I go to bed hungry at night. And we in the kingdom. And I know for a fact that you got to get your mind changed. See, I was born in the cotton fields, raised with 12 children. My mama had food stamps. I didn't know who my daddy was, but I found out that my father was a king. My father is a king. And I found out that I, I had a new identity, that I'm his daughter. And since I'm his daughter, I can have everything that his kingdom has. Ask that person next to you, who are you? And which kingdom are you a part of? Because, see, I want to experience victory as a citizen in the kingdom. I want victory in every area of my life as a citizen in the kingdom. Every area. You mean you can have victory in every, er every area of your life. But God wants us to know how to do business in the kingdom. He wants us to be aware of all the principles of the kingdom. Once again, when you go on a job, when you get there, they take you through orientation. So that you'll know how the company operates. So you'll know the do's and the don'ts of the company. So you'll know what your benefits are. Well, when we came into the kingdom... And we received the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, let me take you through orientation. Let me tell you about how the, the kingdom operates. Let me tell you about all the benefits that you'll have. Some of us missed orientation. We missed orientation. I was one of them. I don't know where I was on the day they was having orientation. But I missed some stuff. Did not tell me how the kingdom operated. They just said, come into it. Come into it and just live and wait till you get to heaven. But I come to give you some orientation today. Kingdom orientation. So that you'll understand the benefits of the kingdom. God is not a God that one set of people over here prosper and the other set over here don't. What kind of king is that? He's a king that wants all of his children to prosper. To be in good health. He wants us to have the things that he has set here on the earth for us. But he gives us some prerequisites. It's orientation day. Somebody says orientation day. He tells us in Matthew 6.33... He says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, number one, the first thing you need to do in orientation here today, the first thing you need to do is pursue after 
the king and his kingdom. Set it as the first priority, the right priority. Go after the things of the kingdom. See, when the kingdom is priority in our lives, and when we worship God, heal the sick, when we testify of him, then our needs will be supplied. You don't have to worry about your needs. The Bible says that he already knows what you have need of. So all you have to do now is focus your attention on the priorities. Now, when you came into the company, I'll use the company for an example. They said, now, if you do your job and seek after doing this, we're going to add to you. We're going to add to you. You don't have to worry. I know you need your check. I know you want your check at the end of the pay period, right? So all you got to do is focus your attention on the kingdom. Seeking after and pursuing after the kingdom, the things of God. That's what I mean when I say the kingdom, the things of God. When you focus your mind on the things of God and his kingdom and on other people and not just yourself, God said, I'm going to add to you. Because you become valuable to me. I can use you. I can do something with you. I can do something through you. Because your focus and your priority is now in the right place. Pursue the kingdom. Go after the kingdom of God. Jesus came and he said, the kingdom is right here, right now. Don't miss it. Don't miss what I've come to give you back. I've come to give you dominion and authority. And you know, we are God's legal representatives here on earth. Satan is the illegal one. But sometimes we give him our rights. And we should not give him our rights. It is unhealthy. God wants you to expand. Tell that person next to you, God wants you to expand. It is unhealthy to stay in the same place over and over again and feel that you're all right. Uh, uh, this orientation day, talk about advancing in the kingdom. It's unhealthy to stay in that same place, going through the same thing over and over again, expecting it to change. Do you know that they say that a person has a mental problem if they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result? That's right. That's right. That's right. You want a different result, you got to change what you do. Somebody say Kingdom. So you, can't, you cannot become satisfied. Too many of us have become satisfied. I didn't say content. I said satisfied. Because you're supposed to be content in whatever state you're in. But I'm talking about satisfied. I know God has gave, you know, provided you a nice apartment. But you shouldn't just be satisfied there. You should say, hey, I want a nice house. You can say, you know, I, I thank God for giving me that job. Yes, God has given you that job. But God, I don't not only want a job, I want a position difference between a job and a position. God, God, I thank you for providing, you know, the hourly wage on my job that I can make $7.50 an hour, $8. But you know, God, I feel a worth down on the inside of me. And that worth down on the inside of me says I'm $18 an hour. I'm talking about expansion in the kingdom. Got to get your mindset changed. The instance that you settle for less and mediocrity and stop advancing, your passion will decline. You'll become satisfied with little. And you'll feel like little is comfortable. It will become comfortable to you. That's why you cannot settle for less and mediocrity. You must reach. You must go. You must pursue the purpose that God has placed on the inside of you. Expansion is vital for the expansion and the advancement of the kingdom of God. God is looking for people that will say, God, use me, push me further. Let me go a little bit further than where I am, God. Let me do a little bit more for you, God. That's what he's looking for. God did not even give the Israelites those that he had promised 
a land flowing with milk and honey. He didn't even, he didn't just, boom, there it was. He didn't just give it to them at once. They had to come out of Egypt and began to pursue and go after the promised land. And let me tell you, I'll say it again to you. If you ever lose your passion for expansion, it will cost you whatever you are currently ruling over and have. We can lose what we have even right now when we fail to have the commitment and the passion to want to expand. Somebody do this, say, get back, I need to expand. So you, you, you got to have an expansion spirit on you. I, I need to expand. Don't, don't want to be getting comfortable where I am. I need to expand. See, God gave us two commands. We still in orientation. He said to exercise dominion over the earth. We know he gave that to Adam and Eve and they lost it. Jesus was resurrected and he gave it back to us. Amen. And then he said, expand my kingdom. Have dominion and expand. We're called to have dominion and expand. Dominion that nothing in this earth will rule over us. We'll take the power and the authority that he's given us. And then we'll expand. We won't just stay where we are. We won't just stay satisfied. And listen to this. As we fulfill... The expansion, which is the second assignment, the first assignment will fulfill itself. Because you can't fulfill expansion and not have dominion. You have to take dominion, the authority, over things that will come up against you. You ever felt like you were pushing against something? Couldn't, it just doesn't seem like you can get your breakthrough and get through. That's because the enemy is fighting against you. Somebody say, God wants me to increase. Woo! I say, God wants you to increase. Well, see, unless you believe it. Unless you believe it, it does not matter that God wants you to do it. It does not matter that God wants you to have it. You've got to believe that God wants you to increase. An increase comes when we are in the process of expanding the kingdom by expanding our lives and expanding what God has called us to do and, and putting our hands to work in the kingdom of God and doing things. See, anointing, you've got to have that anointing. And that anointing and passion goes together. I know some of you think anointing is only for the preachers. It's not for just the preachers. It's for you to take into the streets and to the byways and on your job and in your home and wherever you are. And use that anointing to take that territory and take authority. When you stop moving forward in God, you become spiritually stagnant. Have anybody seen water that just set? When water just sits for a while, you don't have to do anything to it. It'll sour on its own. It'll begin to stink on its own. Well, that's the way it is when we're not moving. When we're not constantly moving and doing things and expanding and looking for greater things, we'll become stagnant. And we become stagnant, we'll begin to stink. We don't like nobody. You wonder why some people got an attitude? They stinking. They stagnant. Because see, people that's moving, they don't have time for attitudes. People that's doing things, fulfilling purpose, they don't have time for attitudes. But those that have become stagnant, they start stinking. Unhappy with everything. Nothing right. Can't nobody please them. Nothing on the job makes them happy. Nothing at church makes them happy. Nothing at home makes them happy. Mate can't make them happy. Change mates like they change shoes. Stagnant. Stagnant. You have to be willing to push forward to enter into greater dimensions 
of the kingdom. It's all there for you. He didn't put any limit on any of us. We limit him by putting him in a box. He said the kingdom of God is in you. We got him boxed up in us. We got to release him and let him out. We have to take the authority that God has given us. See, God will ask you to expand even when you think you have become successful in your job, in your home, in your relationship, in your career, in your business. He'll ask you. He said, that's good enough for you, but it ain't for me. Expand. He's a God that's constantly moving. He's an increasing God. I can't be satisfied today where I am when I started the church 10 years ago. Come on, somebody. You got to keep moving. Keep expanding. Keep accomplishing. Keep doing things. Keep magnifying. Keep glorifying him. Somebody say expanding. See, the poverty mentality says it's enough. I'm satisfied. It's enough. So that's a poverty mentality. Because that's saying that, well, I just got enough to make it for me. I'm not worried about anything else. But a kingdom mind says it's not enough. A kingdom mind says there's more to me than this. A kingdom mind says I'm looking to move forward into even greater things. That's a kingdom mind. Lift your hands in his presence. Every kingdom principle in the word of God is rooted in the law of increase and multiplication. God wants to increase you and multiply. We see it over and over again in the scriptures. But we have to understand this principle of the kingdom because if we do not, we will just stay in mediocrity and stay where we are. And God is saying, I'm pushing for you. Come on. Come on. You can do this. Come on. So I want to encourage somebody today. Don't just stay stagnant. Don't just be satisfied with little. When God said there's greatness in you, don't be satisfied with being able to just pay bills. I don't know about you. I don't want to just pay bills. It's good to be able to pay the bills. Don't get me wrong. I told you I'm a cotton field girl that came from nothing. But I don't want to just spend all my life trying to pay bills. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I think I'm talking to somebody in the house. Somebody's going to get on this train with me. Somebody's going to say I want to go somewhere else. Somebody want to do something else other than just pay some bills. Hallelujah. I'd like to give away some houses to somebody. I'd like to put the elderly in some houses. I would like to give away some cars. I'd like to do something else other than pay my own bills. That's because I'm kingdom minded. And God is looking for somebody that he can use to do greatness. Help somebody else. It's orientation day. It's orientation day. Now the Bible tells us in Matthew 11, 12 through 13, he says, now from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the violent takes it by force. Now he's not saying go out there and violently fight. Physically and with our mouth. He said that we are to fight the enemy that is trying to keep you from advancing in the kingdom. And we fight him spiritually and not physically. God has given you every spiritual weapon you need. The word of God is filled with the words of God. He said life and death is in the power of your tongue. He said you can speak forth the words and the enemy will have to flee. James tells us submit ourselves to God. 
Resist the enemy and he'll flee. And I know you've heard that the best defense is offense. Minister Harrison, those of you that's in football and things, the best defense is offense. And to expand the kingdom means to go on the offense. Some of just sit down, well, it's going to be all right. Satan can just do what he ever wants. It's going to be all right. Girl, I don't feel like fighting. It's going to be all right. But the best offense is to go on the offense. You cannot wait for the enemy to assault you, to take all your stuff, take your children, take your mate, take your home, and for some of you, take your man before you take action against him. Instead, you are to be in a permanent attack mode. We have just gotten too cute as Christians. But wimpy, wimpy, wimpy cannot fight in the kingdom of God. You got to stay in an attack mode against Satan. You better not come near my house. You better not come near my children. I remind you of the pit that you're going in. You better not come this way. The king, the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I know who I am. Yes, Jesus, you know Paul, you know. But you better know my name. Because if you come near my children, you're going to have to fight. Come near my purpose, Satan. You got to fight for it. You should stay in an attack mode. I didn't say against each other. Let me clarify this right now. I didn't say fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. You have to fight for what it is that God has said you can have. It's yours. He's already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The kingdom is in you. But now you have to know how to fight for it. Some of us just sit back and let Satan do whatever he want to do. And I don't about know about you, but I don't like him. I tell him consistently, you got a fight on your hand, you come near me. Why? Because you already fighting somebody that's defeated. Jesus defeated him over 2,000 years ago. And he's now under our feet. And he knows that his days are short. And he don't like you. He does not like you because you are created in the image of God. He does not like you because you've got the king of God, the kingdom on the inside of you. He does not like you because you are anointed and filled with the power of God. And the enemy does not like you. So don't fool yourself. You have an adversary. And he'll fight you on every hand so you better rise up and understand that greater is he that's in you, that's in the world. The operative mode of the kingdom is offense. It is offense. Oh, I'll pray about it later. Later may be too late. Glory to God. So we are continuing on the offensive in terms of spiritual growth and movement. God will give you the increase. He'll give you the increase. Glory to God. You have to guard against the enemy. Your time, your talent, and your treasure. Because he comes for all three of them. If I can take your time, you don't have time to focus on no purpose. You don't have time to read the word of God. You don't have time to go to church. You don't have time to do anything. So he comes after your time. Do this, do this. Has it ever maybe you get ready to go to church in the morning and then everything starts happening? You get ready to read your Bible and you get sleepy. You get ready to pray and the phone rings or somebody always texting you. Why? The enemy wants to steal your time. He take your time. What you going to focus on? It 
takes time to focus on purpose. It takes time to focus on increase. It takes time to focus on going somewhere instead of staying mediocrity. And then it comes after your talent. God says he'll give you the ability, the power, the know-how to get wealth. So what are you doing with that ability, that talent that he's given you? I'm just going to use it for the world and I'm just going to get a regular paycheck. Hello, somebody. I don't know about you, but my regular paycheck has never been enough to fully take care of everything that I needed. I cannot expand just getting a regular paycheck. I need some supernatural blessings. I need to sow somewhere where it's going to multiply and give me some supernatural blessings. Now, for all of you that your paycheck meets all your needs and you increasing like you need to, you can meet me back on the back of the hall because I need you to put some zeros on the end of that check. Because that means you got more than enough for yourself, which means you got enough to bless somebody else. I'm just being real. See, I can't settle for just a paycheck. Paycheck good, I thank you, Lord. But I know there's more in me. There's more. There's more. Somebody say kingdom minded. See, that's how you got to think when you're in the kingdom. Kingdom minded. See, now the enemy, Satan, your adversary, has a plan. I got to tell you about the plan. He has a plan of containment. To stop the advancement of God's kingdom and what God wants you to do in the earth. And this is how he implements his plan. What he will do is, he will cause you to have to face difficulties, obstacles, unseen situations, and persecution. And many times, when those things come, what do we do? We back up. We give up. We just shut down. I don't feel like fighting. Every time I look around, I take one step forward, and I got to go take two steps backwards. The adversary is trying to contain you in that position, in that place where you are. And he knows that if you don't know how to break out of the obstacles and the situations and the circumstances, you'll stay where you are. He has a plan of containment. Somebody need to say, devil, you won't contain me. Ooh, that was not loud enough for me. See, some of them sit there and say, oh, no. Woo! See, you got to tell him you will not contain me. That's his plan. He has a plan of containment. He'll try to hold you back. He'll try to confine you to that situation or that circumstance. And he'll make it look so gloomy that all you see is what you in. And you cannot see the God that's on the inside of you. And then you can't come out of what it is that God has said, come out. He contains you in it. And you look up. Not only as weeks pass. But months pass. And for some of us years. And you still contain. In that same scenario. That same situation. That's his plan. To contain you. He has a plan of containment. He wants to confine you by tempting you to succumb to complacency and passivity. Complacency refers to self-gratification. He makes you think you're all right. 
but by whose measure? He tell you you're all right. But what are you measuring it by? Because the kingdom says move. The kingdom says expand. The kingdom says birth. But he says, you all right. And he gives us things that are to please the desire of the flesh. Because he knows if I can give you a little something right now for self-gratification, I can keep you from that big thing that God really has for you. Lord, have mercy. Woo! If I could just give you enough right now. Self-gratification right now. You won't wait on what it is I really got for you. And since I see a lot of women in here, if I can just give you that man right now, you won't wait on the Boaz that I got planned for you. I didn't get too many claps on that. I wonder if somebody been contained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got to know the plan of the enemy. Containment. And then he says that the enemy will then try to hold you back by passivity. It's a state of being totally indifferent when evil takes over. It's an attitude of tolerance. I'll just tolerate it. I'll be all right. I'll just tolerate it. Whatever you tolerate won't change. I said whatever you tolerate won't change. So Satan gets you into a passivity. And you just begin to tolerate not having. Tolerate being on the bottom instead of the top. Tolerate not having enough. Tolerate not being the blender instead of the borrower. Tolerate. Tolerate being misused and mistreated. You just begin to tolerate it. That's passivity. He makes you passive. Instead of it going after what God said. Allowing what's on the inside of you to rise up. We allow the enemy to gain territory in the kingdom of darkness when we become passive. God wants you to advance. But to advance, he wants you to change your mindset. Don't think the way you used to think. Change the way you think. The enemy wants to entrap you. To keep you from moving. He'll use whatever and whoever is available to keep you from advancing. You better pray for the spirit of discernment. Glory to God. Pray for the spirit of discernment so that you can discern whether it's something trying to hinder you or not. And see, and Satan will get you doing things and make you think you're really moving. He'll, it'll be like being on a treadmill. You're moving, but you ain't going nowhere. You're just moving. And this is what he does to us. Look like you're moving, but you're not going anywhere. Somebody said, advance the kingdom. Sisters and brothers, we have to get a mindset of increase. That means you're going to have to change your thinking. If I had not changed my thinking, being a child of 12, cotton field, no money, I was sharing with someone the other day, I would get 50 cents and run down to the $5-$10 store and buy some material and sit up at night to make a pair of pants to wear the next day. I went to the cotton field and I chopped all day long from 6 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon for $6 a day. But when I stood out there, I didn't allow the cotton field mentality to get in me. I said, I'll take this cotton and I'll make some clothes. I'll take this cotton and I'll do something with it. I became kingdom minded in the cotton field. I did not allow po 
poverty mentality to get in me. I did not allow that just because I'm making $6 today to stay in me. I said, one day I'll make $60. Another day I'll make $600. Another day I'll make $6,000. Can I get anybody to go there with me? I ain't made it there yet, but I'm on my way. Come on, somebody. You got to speak into your own future. See, that was speaking into my future. You have to speak into your future if you're going to expand. See, the future's up there. You got to speak and let it, those words go ahead of you. You can say, I'm right here today. I'm working at McDonald's today. I'm making $7.25 today. I thank you, God, for the job. But I look at that I'm, next time I'm going to have a management position. And from there, I'm going to own the store. And from there, God, I'm not going to own just one. But I'm going to own a couple of them, God. I'm going to expand the kingdom. That's being kingdom-minded. We have to send the word ahead of us into your future. But what happens, Satan gets us in a place where we begin to speak our problems. We speak our issue. We speak what we're going through. We speak our circumstances. We speak how hard it is. We speak the pain of it. We speak the feelings of it. We talk about it over and over again. Instead of saying, yes, I understand that that is a fact, but it's not the truth. The truth is, I won't stay in this place. The truth is, I'm coming out. The truth is, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The truth is, this is just temporary. God's got something greater for me, and I'm moving forward to it. Stand to your feet this morning.